Good evening, everybody. Troy from the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project. Sorry, I'm adjusting myself a lot. I've been working pretty hard today. Um, as you can see, um, on a separate video, you'll have seen that I've been cleaning the leaves up, cleaning up around the house, cleaning the homestead, and actually, it's I like when a job has two purposes. I really love it. I had to clean the leaves up because it attracts bugs and rodents. Actually, mice like to travel under it. Chipmunks like to travel under the leaf cover for protection. And snakes, all kinds of insects and junk. Ticks. Ticks love the leaf cover. So I had to clear it off to protect my tiny house. So that's great. And then I took all the leaves and put them out in the garden as fertilizer. Because what it's called is leaf mold, decaying leaves is one of the best fertilizers. Nature uses it all the time around us and um, it's a very very good fertilizer. So that's all going out there. It's, I'm going to clear out the entire area of leaves with time. It's going to take a lot of time. And it's all going out in the garden as, as fertilizer and cover and start building up my Back to Eden garden layers. I do have to still get some topsoil. That's going to be a job. Um, I started sort of scraping at the ground out here in the woods and it's really tough because it's full of roots and it's been settling for who knows how many hundreds of years untouched. So anyway, but the topic of this video is tiny house construction and why right now everything is sort of on hold. I know you, let, you see me jump around a lot and in the past I haven't really explained the method for my madness. In the future moving forward I want to try to start having little sit down chats with you from time to time and explain what's going on. Um, right now we're in the rainy season. I'm, I think you can probably see right now it's, it's misting on me right now. Um, we've had three weeks of pretty much rain every day. We might get sunny periods, but it rains just about every single day. As you all know, my wood is recycled lumber, especially pallets. Pallet wood can sit outside for years un unharmed, but the problem with pallet wood, as you saw when I started doing my siding, um, if you take wet wood, put it on the house to sit in the sun and dry out, what's going to happen is it's going to shrink and split, leaving massive gaps in my siding. Same happened indoors when I did uh, last December, I think it was, when I did that one wall uh, paneling in the tiny house and it all shrunk and I have massive gaps in between the boards. Same happened in the bathroom. Uh, a couple weeks ago I thought, hey, it's dry. It was, well, three weeks now it must have been before the rain started. I thought, hey, it's dry. I went out and I grabbed all the pallet wood. Now we had just had the melt, okay, granted. It had just melted and we had maybe a week or so of dry, sunny days. So I went and got a pallet wood and put it on the bathroom wall. It shrunk, leaving massive gaps in between. I have to wait for the dry season before I can really continue using reclaimed lumber on the tiny house because the reclaimed lumber is all sitting outdoors exposed to the elements. I can't wait to get the, 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 the siding on and to get my paneling finished in the house. The problem is the paneling is all those scrap 2x4s laying over here in the rain. I don't have enough tarps to go around and cover it all the, the tarps that you saw me put in the garden are actually decaying, biodegrading, and shredding, and that's useless for protecting wood. So, and then a lot of people suggest putting it in my workshop tent. Problem is, my workshop tent is full of stuff I'm using every day. It's my workshop. I don't yet at this time have any space to keep wood. Uh, I'm working on that. I'm going to set up one whole wall with shelving, and it's going to take time, but I want to set up one entire wall with shelving just as in a normal basement workshop or garage workshop and have all my boards sitting up there on the shelving and then it can stay there and it can cure and whatever but another problem it's a tent and a tent gets humidity inside so even then the wood isn't going to be optimal for using in this weather because it rains the rain goes under and even if I had pallet floors raised floors no matter what it rains, the rain goes under the tent, obviously, and then it, the sun shines, if or when it ever does, and then it gets humid in there. Now if I took that wood and put it on the walls or put it on the outside of the house, the sun shines on it, it's going to shrink and crack. And 
So I hope that explains why right now, I mean, I can't explain it any more clearly. Living out here using reclaimed lumber, which is sitting outdoors, it's fine. But when I'm ready to use it, I have to wait for it to be dry. It's just all, it's just how it is. So I hope you understand. I hope that explains everything. Why it is how it is and why I'm doing the things I'm doing or not doing what I'm doing at this time. Recently, the priority has been, been to put up a perimeter fencing around the property. Um, if you go check out Man of Many Things, for example, he won't come here because of the ticks. He talks about it all the time. I get multiple ticks on me every day. And fortunately, I've never been bitten to this day because I have very sensitive skin. And I feel everything. I feel every, every, if a hair twitches, I feel it, which is good. In this case, it's very good. My whole life, I was annoyed at it, and now I'm so happy that I'm that sensitive. So, I want to get that fence up. Another thing is, then the chickens can free range. I won't be spending any more money on food, really. I, I don't think I honestly have to feed them. People are saying you have to feed free range chickens because they're going to exercise more. That doesn't make sense because chickens are animals of nature. They're going to eat from nature. You don't have to feed them all the time. That's, uh, that, that I can't even consider that a, a a possibility. People free range chickens truly free range all the time. And sure, maybe they're exercising more, but they'll eat more. And that's, <laughs> let them have it. <laughs> There's so many insects out here. It is insane. I will be so happy when the chickens are eating them all. So, speaking of stuff growing and wild around here, this is a weed. I forgot the name of it. I forgot. Um, it's a common field weed and it's funny because I used to hoe these out of the fields every day and I, I can't think of the name but this is a leafy green and it is an edible and there's two field weeds that people eradicate all the time there's amaranth which is a very expensive health food plant funny enough and then there's this little guy which I can't remember pigweed? I can't remember I don't want to lie to you but anyway off, sidetracked. So I hope that explains everything. I want to get this meadow fenced in. I want to get Joy running free and happy and uh, turn her loose, let her roam the property, and that'll be quite soon now. Um, right now, now that I got that fence done, and I've really worked my body to death, I'm in a lot of pain from all the trees and moving and cutting and slashing. Taking a little break from that now that the chicken wire is up. I've got to get this garden prepped because time is ticking and get these plants in that I bought, all these 174 plants in. And then I'll get back to doing the electric fence around the entire property and then I'll build the gates. So these are the way, this is the, this is the process of how things are going to go next. Gardening, electric fence, gates, and then hopefully we'll have the dry season I'll be getting on that house. So I hope that explains everything clearly enough and I gotta get back to work. See you guys later.